Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I would like to talk uh, about my experience uh, integrating ChatGPT plugin with uh, OAuth uh, authentication for the security. Uh, you know, because out of the box uh, in ChatGPT, recommended security model is uh, service-based. Service this means uh, you get a token from ChatGPT and you paste this token into your plugin configuration file and then uh, you also set your own uh, token in, in, in plugin and you create a match between those tokens basically and this means all the future requests that are uh, going through the plugin uh, they'll bring a token and you can always check inside the plugin if this token is uh, available this means the request was sent from chat gpt not from uh, from some external api call this means this way you can protect the uh, uh, the chat GPT API but this is not enough if uh, inside your plugin you want to have some user specific functionality for example you want to save user data between sessions or uh, you want to implement some other user specific functionality for those uh, for this kind of functionality you need to have uh, you need to have the option to identify the user. And out of the box, uh, ChatGPT doesn't provide uh, user information uh, for the user that logged into the ChatGPT session for some security purposes, probably. But uh, what they allow to do, they allow to uh, implement OAuth uh, implementation and ask user, uh, once user installs your plugin, uh, uh, ChatGPT asks uh, that user to enter credentials and then based on those credentials uh, uh, you can identify user in a, in a, in a next sessions like a next day and so on and uh, this way you can get username and use that uh, use the username that user provided specifically for you uh, inside your ChatGPT plugin functionality and yeah with OAuth it's tricky because there are uh, multiple providers uh, like a cloud uh, uh, solutions that uh, allow you to uh, handle all of authentication you can also run some on-premise uh, solutions if you want but in my case because uh, for chat gpt plugin uh, it was just overhead to run uh, some on-premise uh, OAuth server and i evaluated a couple all of uh, providers and one of them called log2 as you see here on the dashboard uh, i found it the most uh, the simplest and straightforward to use for my development use case to implement uh, authentication in chat gpt plugin and i would recommend it to you as well and they support team support team from the log2 is great <clears throat> i had a uh, few questions uh, about how to set up uh, of configuration to work properly with ChatGPT plugin and they very kindly uh, provided all the information I asked them and they helped me a lot so uh, very much recommended and uh, it's very easy uh, in log2 this uh, very nice free tire and there's no uh, credit card information required in advance you can create your account and use up to the uh, certain point when you have up to certain point of the uh, unique users in systems uh, system and then if you are more you have more users than that then you need to pay and basically the same approach is used by all other of uh, uh, providers as well all right so we, we go to dashboard here you see this uh, because it's a, a demo instance i'm showing here on the screen it's one user logged in and uh, if you want to define uh, support for ChatGPT plugin or auth then you need to go to applications create application uh, and it's kind of straightforward to get uh, client key secret key and there uh, you'll get endpoints uh, I'll not go into this application because it's, uh, the, some of the fields are sensitive information so I'll not open that but it's kind of straightforward you get all the endpoints that you need to uh, copy paste uh, to your chat gpt plugin configuration and yeah it works um, pretty much out of the box this is a great tutorial uh, written by log2 team so if you search log2 uh, chat gpt plugin authentication you'll get all the step-by-step -step instructions uh, how to implement this kind of um, integration and in this case in my case i was interested only in email connector but uh, log2 provides also sms connector social connectors that user user could log in through 
uh, Google account through GitHub and so on. But uh, I think that in my case, uh, email authenticator is enough because I don't want to ask user to, uh, to I don't want to force user to log in into my plugin through Google provider where he would need to provide the password. Uh, with email authenticator, user just provides the email and gets um, the code uh, which is emailed uh, to his account and then he can copy paste this code and uh, this way the authentication happens. That's very straightforward. And on the user management tab, for example, you can see all the users who logged in into your uh, plugin or other application. If you're using Log2 with some other application, you can check the details of the user and which, which is nice, you can also get audit logs and you can see uh, all the events that happened with the OAuth and this way you can monitor any issues and so on. Right. And if you go to the uh, ChatGPT plugin documentation, there is one example uh, which shows how to implement OAuth and uh, basically you need to define in AI plugin.json, you need to define uh, authentication type or auth, then you provide client URL, authorization URL. So the client URL and the authorization URL in this case would come, uh, would point to the log2. Uh, uh, it's, it's not mandatory to use the same uh, plugin host name as where the chat GPT plugin is hosted. For auth endpoint, you can use uh, of provider endpoints like log2 in my case it could be auth0 or whatever and then verification token you will get this token once you install as a developer your plugin in chat gpt you'll get this token then you need to copy paste it in um, inside this definition and then you redeploy uh, plugin with new token and then you in chat gpt plugin you would press uh, next button and would go to the login screen where you would log in uh, with uh, uh, with credentials to test uh, of uh, authentication. Then if you follow this tutorial along uh, in Python implementation, they provide uh, two endpoints, uh, two examples for OAuth exchange and OAuth. So those two, uh, you can ignore them. Uh, if you're using log2, <coughs> you don't need to implement any OAuth proxy inside your chat GPT plugin. You simply point to the endpoints that provided by log2 application and all the uh, logic, all the functionalities out of the box handled by the log2. This is uh, great because uh, one of the very common issue with chat GPT plugin is uh, after certain time of inactivity, uh, <clears throat> uh, OAuth would require a refresh token and not all providers out of the box supply a refresh token and you may get error that uh, credentials are invalid anymore so after like 5-6 hours then of inactivity suddenly plugin would stop working but with OAuth if you follow the, the tutorial for ChatGPT plugin integration then they 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 solve this uh, issue out of the box and uh, after a certain time of inactivity if user comes back and using your plugin then correct refresh token will be issued automatically and there will be no authentication error okay so let's see uh, let me go now to the uh, to actual example of uh, applic uh, AI plugin.json for uh, my uh, use case, uh, like I already mentioned, based on the documentation from ChatGPT plugin, I'm using type OAuth, then I point client URL and authorization URL to uh, log2, and this token will be uh, replaced during installation time of the plugin. And uh, client URL and authorization URL host names, uh, they point to log2, and there's no requirement that, uh, like, uh, domain where plugins deployed there's no no need to too much uh, domains uh, can be different so where the plugin is deployed and with where OAuth is running like in this case i have sparrow received assistant that's my consulting domain and OAuth points to the log2 domain okay and now let's see how this works and if i go to google chrome over here i can say that uh, I can make a request to the plugin and I can make sure that uh, uh, correct token is uh, being uh, returned by OAuth and uh, there is no error, authentication error. Um, this session is, was already authenticated in the past and I can say that, uh, uh, hi, can you 
bring a list of receipts from DB again. Okay, and now uh, uh, the call to the uh, plugin is executed, and there is no authentication error because log2 returns connect correct uh, token, and I get back the result. Now I could go and uh, uh, check, for example, over here uh, to the machine where plugin is running. I'll see that I'm printing out currently the token which is sent by ChatGPT into my plugin. This is the token. Uh, and this token uh, is uh, contains encoded information about the user who is using my plugin at the moment. And I could get this user information um, by calling user info endpoint on the log2. So I could copy that. And then I uh, let me go exit from here over here. And then if I navigate to Postman, uh, here is the example with the older token and if I execute that this token is not valid anymore so obviously I cannot get information about the user who executed current request and uh, if I replace that value with the current token which I got from ChatGPT uh, send it and I get this information sub uh, this is the unique ID assigned to the user who is using ChatGPT plugin and this unique stays the same uh, between the requests and uh, after the with the new token and uh, it's guaranteed that uh, this uh, current user is assigned with this unique ID and you can safely use it to identify the user. You could also return the email for example for the user but for the privacy purposes I'm not interested to uh, fetch um, email information uh, to my uh, ChatGPT plugin. It's enough to have this unique key to identify the user. Right, and then now after this uh, request was executed, if I go back to uh, log2, uh, I'll see that uh, if I go back over here, I see that at this at this time uh, exchange token uh, was returned by log2 correctly to the plugin, and this means that plugin before executing the request it authenticated with log2 and it checked that this user um, which is logged into the chat GPT have the permission to call the plugin and authentication was successful yeah and yeah so this is how it works and I should say that I'm very happy with log2 and it helped me to save lots of time because I think spent quite a lot of time like a week or so to investigating and integrating different uh, of providers with uh, ChatGPT plugin and uh, there was different errors coming up and uh, it's very frustrating but uh, with log2 it was very easy and just in five minutes it's uh, just up and running so thanks to log2 thanks for watching and um, good luck implementing your own ChatGPT plugin so uh, see you next time. Bye.